Hey guys, this is Charles Jager with Metal. In this tutorial, we're going to go over the new features that are a part of Mantra VR version 1.20. There's quite a few new features, including rectilinear flat video effect support. There's also a new environment light system for the graphics effect that helps with compositing, as well as all new audio reactivity signal fall off controls, and a few new options with other effects, and of course, bug fixes. All right, let's go ahead and jump into After Effects. All right guys, now that we're inside of After Effects, let's take a look at one of the first new features that was actually introduced in version 1.1. It's a recent update, and that is a better resolution with the Metal Globe Preview, if you haven't seen this. So I'm gonna go up here to Window and go to Extensions and find Metal Globe Preview. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on my composition, and that'll go ahead and update on the Globe Preview. But you're gonna notice that this is a high resolution now. It looks even better, and you can double click, of course, and go inside of the sphere and look around, but you will see a resolution improvement on the preview, which is always nice. And a few of the options have been moved. So we have the grid option down here. You can just click on that to turn that on and off. And we also have support now for monoscopic or stereoscopic support, depending on the footage you're using. But again, this does have a better resolution. I'm just gonna go ahead and select this and dock it over here, just so we can see that throughout the tutorial as well. Now let's start things off by looking at the big new feature for version 1.2 of Mantra VR, and that is the rectilinear or flat video support for all of the Mantra VR effects. So I'm gonna come over here and I've got a shot here just of the city shot. So this is a 16 by nine regular video. If you've ever wanted to use any of the Mantra effects on flat video like this, in the past you could, but you would obviously have that ick rectangular distortion at the top and at the bottom. And let's go ahead and demonstrate this really quickly. So I went ahead and searched Mantra up here in the effects and presets panel to see all the Mantra effects. And I want to select the Mantra VR Turbulence effect because it's a really popular effect, one of my favorites. And it's an effect that I've wanted to use on regular video as well. If I go in here and increase the progress, you're going to see we get this cool, like, distortion kind of Van Gogh look on this video. And in the center kind of part of the video, it looks more like what I'm actually wanting. But the top and bottom, obviously, it's treating this like it's echo rectangular footage. So we get these weird distortions at the top and bottom. And it never is really going to look quite right. But now I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to set the progress to zero. Under frame layout though, where we normally have monoscopic and stereoscopic options, you're now gonna see rectilinear, and that is for flat video. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that, and watch what happens now when I increase the progress. You're gonna see, now it's treating this, of course, like it's just normal video. We're not getting any distortion at the top or the bottom like we would on echo rectangular. And you can see now, we can obviously use this like it's a normal effect in After Effects on any traditional video we have. We can still use all these other options, which is really cool. As you can see, it's reflected here on the turbulence effect. Let's take a look at another flat shot I've got here, which is just of some fire. And I could apply something like the hyperbolics effect. And you're going to see right now off the default, we have monoscopic selected. So I'm going to change this now to be rectilinear. And I can go ahead and I can move the position of this to get all these different looks. And you can see this looks really trippy. What's cool is now we can interpolate this effect from 100 to 0 and get kind of a cool transitional effect here. So I'm going to go ahead and move this back to the very beginning, create a keyframe for interpolate. I'm going to move down here just a little bit in time. And I'll go ahead and bring this down to zero. And you can see how it transitions now back into the original shot. And I'm actually going to select my footage. I'm going to hit U on the keyboard. And on that last keyframe, I'm going to select that. And I'm going to hit F9 to make it an easy ease. And actually to smooth it out even more, I'm going to select the graph editor here. And I'm just going to pull this over to kind of smooth that out. And I might move that down just a little bit more. We'll do a quick RAM preview of this. And you can see the effect that this will have. So you can see this is just a quick demonstration of the trippy effects you can create using Mantra VR effects on your traditional video. Another one I really like, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the hyperbolics effect, is the escher droste effect on this. So I'm just gonna apply that, change it to be rectilinear. And you can see when I move this around, it almost looks like it's 3D now, kind of like a weird perspective. But again, we can keyframe this. I'm gonna do a cool keyframe with this in the same manner. So I'm gonna move that back to the very beginning. And I'm actually gonna keyframe the zoom loop first. So I'll do a keyframe there. Move down here about four seconds and just move this down. And I'm going to move back to the very beginning and on the interpolate, I'm going to create a keyframe there at 100. Move that down here to around four seconds again. Set it to zero. And of course, it's going to look a lot better if we smooth that out. So I'm going to select that footage. I'm going to hit U on the keyboard. And just on the interpolate keyframe there, I'm going to select that. Hit F9. And then I'm going to go ahead and go into the graph editor here and make this a little bit smoother. And now let's go ahead and RAM preview this. And there you go, you can see it going from the Escher Droste perfectly into the footage. I like how it just kind of goes seamlessly into that. It kind of matches the heat mapping there, which looks really cool. But just to give you one more quick idea of kind of the difference, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that effect. And I'm gonna select the Chrome Spheres effect. 
and apply it to this footage. And you can see if we zoom in here on the chrome spheres effect, the reflection on the sphere, you can see this seam line right in the middle and this kind of weirdness at the top and bottom. And that's what it looks like with default. And that's what you would get if you use this effect traditionally on your normal video. At least it was that way in the past. So now that we have the option we can change this to rectilinear. You're gonna see the reflection update. And now you can see what it's basically done is it's auto orienting this footage for the reflections and all the other effects. So you don't see those kind of seam lines. And that's what's cool about this. And you can see I can move this around and we can actually increase the distribution here and we can adjust things using the latitude again as well. So you can create some cool effects with that and you can see the reflections of everything else in the other spheres. So again, that's the main difference that's now being applied and that's what makes the rectilinear effects possible with all the Montre VR effects. Now let's take a look at another one of the big updates to Montre VR version 1.2 and that is the graphics environment light. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna select the graphics effect and I'm just gonna drag and drop that onto my 360 footage here. And this is a really good example clip because it has a lot of contrast and a lot of saturation in it. So we're gonna see a big difference here. So with the graphics effect, you know, traditionally, this allows us to apply any graphics to our rectangular footage. So I've got a logo here, a metal logo. Just turn that on, you can see. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn the visibility of that back off. And I'm gonna select my 360 footage. So what we've got here under the graphics effect, we have the projected layer. So I'm just gonna select that metal logo. So now we can see that's being projected in 360 and we can scale it to resize it and stuff like that. But you can see the logo looks exactly the way it did traditionally. Let's see if I go ahead and turn that back on, you can see the color of it there. And I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the Metal Globe preview here as well. So you can see it's being projected flat and that's what we want. However, let's say I wanted to composite this now into this scene a little bit easier. We can do that a lot quicker now using what's called the environment light that's a part of the graphics effect. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna take color samples all over the 360 footage and apply that onto this logo. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on and you're gonna see an immediate difference. And right now it doesn't look quite as good, but we have some more material and environment options we can adjust to really composite this again into the scene. So this works really well, not necessarily just for logos, but for anything you're wanting to composite into a shot that's 360, this is just gonna speed up that workflow. I think you're gonna see that here. So let's go ahead and look at the material options first. So I'll check that down. We have all these different material options and you'll notice these are similar settings that we have in the Montre VR primitives effect. So if you're already used to using that, you're gonna see those same settings here. And we can make adjustments to like the ambient light you can see, and also the reflectivity. So I can actually increase this. It's gonna add reflectivity here onto that logo. And you can see as I select it and move it around, it's gonna reflect what's around it in this particular environment. So that's really cool. But I'm gonna go ahead and dial that back down some. But again, what's really nice is just it's sampling from all over the 360 footage. So you can see when I move this around, it's gonna kind of change the coloring of how it looks. So when I lift it up here, you can see it's not as light down here, so that light's reflecting off of it, so it's what makes it darker. And again, this is kind of true to the real world because the sun wouldn't be hitting this side of it. So if I look up here, you can see the sun is atop the logo, so we're underneath it, so this is kind of the shadow area. But if I move this down to the floor, you're gonna see it's gonna kind of brighten up, get a little more of an orange tone to it, maybe a little blue tone reflecting from the sky. And I can look down at it, and you can see how that looks now just allows us to composite something into this 360 footage a lot faster. So I'm just gonna move this back to the center. And I'll just zoom in here a little bit. And so again, we have these other options we can adjust. I'm gonna bring the reflectivity down a little bit more. Next, we have the environment tab and we have two different options here. We have intensity and color bleeding. So intensity set to 100 from default. And that's just the overall intensity of the environment being applied to this. You can see if I bring this down, all the way to zero, it's gonna kinda of go black and that's gonna really allow us to just use these material options if we wanted to. So again, I can increase the ambient light here. And when I do that, all the way up to 100, now the logo looks just as it would from default. There's a little bit of reflection applied to it, we can turn that off. But now the logo kinda of looks as it did originally. So I'm gonna set the ambient light back down to something like 20 and bring the environment intensity all the way back up to 100. Next we have color bleeding and you can think of this as how much saturation is being applied to the logo. The default is set to 70. If I increase this all the way to 100, you can see we get a little bit more of an even orange color tone onto this. When I move this around, it's gonna to continue to change what colors we see. But you can see when I bring the color bleeding down to zero, that we no longer get that color tone on our logo. However, we can still move the logo around and get different lighting changes on the logo with the luminance. But again, we won't have any saturation. So definitely experiment with the color bleeding whenever you're making a composite because depending on your shot, may depend on how much color bleeding you want to be on the graphic. I typically like the color bleeding to be a little bit higher, probably around 70, which is the default, so that's probably best. 
and we can go ahead and check the environment light on and off. You can see the difference that we're applying there to that logo. One other thing I want to mention is the environment light will be applied to however many instances you have here in the graphics effect. So if I go ahead and toggle down distribution and increase the number of instances here, you're going to see each logo looks a little bit different depending on where it's positioned in the 360 shot. And I can move this around. And you're going to see subtle color changes on each of the logos. And again, I can come in here under material, adjust the reflectivity, and you're going to see they're all going to reflect different things depending on where they're located in the shot. So it's really cool. You can see this one's getting more light since it's down here on the bottom. Some of these others that are up near the top aren't getting as much. So again, using the environment light is really going to speed up any 360 compositing you need to do, especially if you're on a tight deadline. All right, now let's take a look at the next update, and that is enhanced audio reactivity. They have an all-new algorithm for the audio reactivity, and they have some cool new signal fall-off stuff. So I've got some 360 footage here that has some music on it. I'll go ahead and ramp preview this really quickly. So you can see this clip does have music, so that's what I'm going to use for my audio reactivity. So let's come up here, and I'm going to select the Mantra VR effect and apply it to my 360 footage. And you're going to see we have this audio reactivity tab down here. And any of the Mantra effects that we apply underneath the Mantra VR effect will be affected by the audio reactivity. And also we can go into the panel here for Mantra VR, and we can also have some other audio controls here. We'll take a look at that in just a second. So I'm going to close this up. So let's go ahead and just set up the initial audio reactivity. So where it says audio layer, I'm going to select my 360 footage. So then I got this zip line clip here. Next we have effect on master and we can select between one of the four bands down here. So I'm gonna select band one. And I'm just gonna to toggle this down and you can see we have all these different audio settings. What's nice about this in the new update, they've expanded everything from the Hertz. So you can go ahead and select all the way from the bottom to the top within one band if you wanted to. And you can really just set this on whatever Hertz range you want. Of course we have the amplifier, the threshold options here, but here is the new fall off type. So you can see the default is smooth EXP 10. And that's the one I really like, but you can see all the different ones you have here. You have linear, smooth EXP E, and accumulative, which will kind of like build up over time, which is really cool. And then you have some other fall off options here, such as milliseconds and the output. So let me go ahead and just apply the Chrome Spheres effect to this. And I think you're gonna understand a little bit more when you actually see it. So I'm gonna select the Chrome Spheres effect and just apply it underneath the Mantra VR effect. And I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the scale here down a little bit. And let's go ahead and increase the distribution here. Just so we have more Chrome Spheres we can see react. So now that we have this set up, let's just go ahead and do a quick RAM preview to see how this reacts to everything. So you can see the scale of the spheres is adjusting depending on the beat of the music, when the bass hits, that kind of thing. And you can see even when I just scroll over the timeline here, you can see how they're changing. And a lot of that's because of the new fall off type, which is smooth. But again, we can go ahead and adjust this and change this to other ones if we wanted to. And feel free to experiment with that and definitely experiment with the other audio options. I quickly do want to show you the accumulative effect here. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to accumulative. And I'm going to set the Chrome Spheres down a little bit smaller because what they're going to do is they're actually going to grow over time. So you can see as I go ahead and just move through the timeline, you can see with each beat of the music, they're actually getting bigger, and which can be a really cool trippy effect. And here's a preview of the Accumulate Falloff Type. Now something else we can do is we come up here and we could toggle the Mantra VR panel. And what I could do in here, you can see I have the Chrome Spheres effect applied. I can come in here to controls and I'm going to select an audio bass output and it's going to add that bass output and you can see that's been added over here in our effects controls and I'm going to link this bass output now to the chrome spheres to the position deviation so each time the bass hits it's going to kind of move the spheres around so I'm just going to close this up we can do a quick ram preview to kind of see what this looks like you can see when I just scroll the timeline how they're kind of moving there So you can see how that moved around the spheres there with the beat of the music. And again, you can link up any of the effect properties to various audio effects and get different reactions. So make sure you guys definitely experiment with the new updated audio reactivity controls. Now let's take a look at two other smaller feature updates. One of them is on the turbulence effect. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and add that to my 360 footage. You'll notice now with the turbulence effect, we have a blending mode option down here. So let's go ahead and increase the progress here a little bit. So you're going to see how this gives us this crazy distortion. I really dig this effect. So now we come down here to blending mode and I could set this to be add and you can see it's going to apply this on top of our original footage and we can control the opacity of it. So if we just want it to be really subtle, kind of like a trippy effect, like almost like smoke. 
you can see how that's reacting there to that. So it's to a screen mode perhaps. And this just allows you to have more customization without having to duplicate this on multiple layers, that kind of thing. So again, the blending mode option is new for the VR turbulence effect. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. We also have blending modes on the hyperbolics effects. So I'm just gonna drag that onto the 360 footage. And you can see we have the hyperbolics effect. But if we come down here at the bottom, we have blending mode. And I can set this to be normal. And then we have the opacity slider here as well. So you can dial in between your original shot and the new hyperbolics effect. But you could also set the blending mode again to something like overlay. And then you could come up here and you could cycle out the hyperbolics effect for some trippy looks. You can see that on the footage. So again, just having this allows you a lot more creative options and you have the whole host of different blending modes or you can just set it to normal and dial out the opacity. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the hyperbolics effect. Now I'm gonna select the stretcher effect and apply that to my 360 footage. And one new feature you're gonna see on this as well is the North Pole and South Pole blur. So occasionally when you would stretch your footage here, at the top and bottom, depending on how you stretched it, you can see obviously we're limited to how many pixels we have up at the top and bottom. And I'm gonna go into the Metal Globe preview here so we can see this. And it's very subtle, maybe difficult to see, but you can see we're getting a little distortion up here at the top and bottom. And you can see as I stretch that, you can start to see a little bit of kind of like where the pixels are starting to get a little bit stretched. And what we have here is this North Pole Blur and South Pole Blur. So I can go ahead and increase this. And you can see it's going to just be a very subtle blur right there on that. Maybe difficult to see. I'll try to zoom in there just a little bit. But you can apply that blur again to get rid of any kind of subtle pixel issues you might have at the very top and bottom of the footage, which occasionally can occur depending on how much you're kind of pushing the stretcher effect on your echo rectangular footage. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this overview of Mantra VR version 1.20 and all the features that come with it. Definitely looking forward to seeing all the stuff you guys can create using these effects. This has been Charles Jager with Metal. Thanks for watching.